I don't need friends. I've got two of the best ones already. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah, one of charming. them. I think I think one of them wants you to die. And I'm gonna let you. And I'm gonna let you. Yeah, that's the worst part. I don't know who it is. I don't exactly. know who the I'm gonna, let you, I'm gonna let you stew on which one it is. Oh fuck. <laughs> Hey guys, we got merch. Limited quantity drop. A limited quantity of items are being produced for the holidays. Orders will begin shipping the first week of December. All orders placed before December 10th will arrive before Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Check out the link in the description or shop the merchandise below the video before it's too late. You guys have been bitching about this forever, so you better fucking buy some. Shit. If you don't buy some stuff, then go fuck yourself. Fuck you. Welcome back to Cream Crew. Welcome back to Cream Crew. Did you guys see uh, Frederick Nunson just released another Down the Rabbit Hole yesterday? No. Who who is this exciting fellow? He does that the, this popular documentary series Down the Rabbit Hole on uh, YouTube. What are they about? Just like weird internet culture rabbits. shit and whatever oh, okay. else. I mean, like uh, his last one was two years ago about like a chess playing computer that was awesome. They just released one on Eve Online, which is like a mo like it's like a MOBA game, but it's like six hours long. It's been uh, wow. a very enjoyable watch so far. Wait, e Eve Online is six. I thought Eve was the big spaceship game. Yeah, it is, mm -hmm. but it's documentary is six hours long. Oh, the documentary. I, was, I thought you were saying the game was. I was like, right? No, I think no, just no, did no, the no, tutorial. no, 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 no. Yeah, no. It's about the game, uh, and just like all the shit. That like literally, I think from the, its conception to current day, all of the stuff that's been going on with it and like stuff that's happened in the game, get the gaming like community around it, like what people were doing in the game. It's just very like it's I like I love his stuff because it's things that I've never thought of in my life. Like I've never heard of Eve online, but yet even though I'm, I, I feel a little lost in it because it's just so much information, it's it's still very, very entertaining. Like it's the best like. In my opinion, if you're like working on a project, I love throwing his stuff up. Like I've thrown, I'd say like probably every video I make, I throw on one of his documentaries while I'm working. That's like an insane skill to me. In, like insane to be able to uh, work and have something playing at the same time. I thought, I, mean, you're gonna say the, the, I thought you were going to say making a six hour documentary on EVE Online. I was going to no, say, that's I easy. agree. That's, that's fucking child's play. <laughs> but having something playing in the background when you're trying to work to me is like I don't know, power. man. I, I I I don't know. I I feel like I I've tried looking up information and finding sources, and then I just it, as soon as I hit the first road bump, I'm like, I, I'm 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 just gonna we're gonna do a lot of paraphrasing, you know? Oh, for your are you saying or, or you're just to anything? Make a documentary? Yeah. That's, well, that's not fair. that I've ever wanted to make a documentary, but just even like. Like if you were like, oh, this is interesting. I want to like let me look into this. And as soon as like you as you, as soon as it like shows any kind of complication to actually doing that, I feel like it's very easy to just be like, ah, well, you know. I mean, I think I get the gist of what's going on. Yeah, it's all so, a bunch of he said, she said. Anyway, who's to say? Exactly. Yeah, a little he said, kinda, she said bullshit. You kind of do say you kind of do do documentaries these days on your second channel, like this skibbity toilet deep dive thing. <laughs> Just kind of summarized the whole series. Yeah, but I, I'm i able to be lazier with it and just improvise comedy mm -hmm. when it's like I kind of just look up the surface level of what's going on. I mean, if it's interesting and like, you know, it's like, oh, this happened or X happened. It is fun to like look things up, but I would say it's mostly just a catalyst to just like poke fun and, you know, like make comedy. It is, yeah, it is very yeah. much like uh, the synopsis section of like a Wikipedia page. <laughs> and then so and so <laughs> said this, and then they did this. Da, 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 da. And then, yeah, you just get to make jokes in between the synopsis. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's especially like we, we found a, like, at least I found that I enjoyed that process too, because almost everything, I mean, I, you just, uh, you guys probably feel this way a little bit too, but it's like, I just don't care. I just don't care about anything. I, my, I, my cold fat heart has a hard time actually wanting to give a fuck about anything ever. So if something is like relatively 
no, like newsworthy or is in, in the <clears throat> cultural zeitgeist, it's easier, especially if I have zero interest in it, to just be like, what is this about? And then the comedy comes from like this fat, like, you know, 40 year old idiot who's just going to tell you about it uh, for like things that probably oh, not, who, not who, caring. Yeah, yeah. People who are probably in the same boat as me of like, who the, what, why do I care about this? But the thing is like, I don't want you to care. I just want you to like enjoy the comedy of this while I tell you about something that's actually happening or something. And it's never like, you know, all right, guys, we're joking about the Palestine, you know, Israel conflict. <laughs> it's never I anything know, that that'd heavy. Be awesome. No, I, I, I wouldn't. So no, yeah, you're no, going to no. have to to do that video. You have to go back like yeah. 3000 years. You have to be like, okay. I was like, wait, what happened? Yeah, wait, wait, what the stupid. hell is this? There's just some stuff I don't <laughs> right, really well, give a fuck about. And if you're like me, then uh, I'm here to explain it for you. Uh, so no, a I bunch feel like of that, fucking... that, that would be the majority <laughs> of all Americans. I feel like, wait, what? <laughs> Who? Wait, really? Huh? That's the majority of all Americans. Huh? <laughs> I think the majority of Americans are like, oh my God, that is so sad. And then that's the extent of it. And then they, and then they move on with their life, never giving it a thought again. You know what? That is the uh, privilege brought to you by the bold actions of your people in years past. So it would almost be insulting to not take advantage of that privilege. But, you know, I, uh, okay. you know, I'm just, I'm just a dummy. And, you know, there it is. In the EVE Online thing, have they gotten into... I remember my uh, ex brother in law was a big Eve guy and hip with like the, the goings ons. And maybe 10 years ago, something crazy happened where this guy in the game defrauded like thousands of other people out of their Eve money or whatever. Like he's, he set up like a bank, I think, in the game. Yeah, because the bank Which has is, some currency. I think I've gotten to that part, yeah. but yeah, no, it was like actual he, <laughs> legal trouble or whatever. I think that happened. Well, he steals he steals everyone's money, and then he builds the literal Death Star <laughs> with it, and goes off into space, and nobody can kill him. You know? Yeah. It, it sounded very very funny. It, it like the game all is these, complex enough that all, it's, all of it's these like stories. legitimately like a space fantasy. You can go live. Well, yeah, this like it's like. I, I can't remember if they said it's the first sandbox MMO RPG, but the the aspect of like how the game works and how the community is around it, which first off <laughs> just sounds just awful. Like it sounds like the sweatiest try hard nerds <laughs> ever. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But there's like legitimate phases where it's like when this patch was released, it introduced like piracy in the game and people became pirates and it became a thing. But then like two updates later it's like well you couldn't make money as good as you used to so you have to like uh you know if it found out that people were like mining gas clouds for resources it's just it's 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 very interesting to see how things are going <laughs> uh but i paused i haven't finished all of it because it is i mean it's like you know it's a it's a long watch i like, launch, I like how it's because the, the, the game's so intricate it's starting to have real world problems they're like oh boy yeah the fucking the inner city space kids and not performing mm -hmm. grade wise as well as we would like, you know. Ah, uh, you know this fucking war has broken out and so and so. Have we tried to use Eve Online to just simulate solutions to our problems? Like, the same way that did that dude that did like that Rat City use that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, why? Why not? I feel like maybe we could get this thing in the Middle East wrapped up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Eve Online <laughs> brings harmony to the world. Um, <laughs> it's interesting yeah, they, they too that they have. Out. They have yeah. their own uh they have their own currency that translates to actual real world money, which is pretty crazy. Uh so that's why it was a big, a very funny thing with the guy in his bank. His space bank. <laughs> Eve players start raping each other in game. This was never a feature built in, but they're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think that right now they're getting ready to have that that could happen soon. I think I'm on the part where it's like <laughs> right now it's that right might be next. <laughs> that might be next because the uh right now I think it's well, like you, you can, do you like can a, only you stay can, in you your could ship. You do like a boarding action. That'd be that'd be pretty fun. Be well, pretty I think funny. that they're getting ready to say that they're introducing like you can get out of your ship and actually like talk with other players or something because right now oh, okay. it's like so it's coming we're on we're on the trajectory. I, I think it is coming i mean i'll, I'll keep you updated but we are block yeah. by block building a new world inside a world it's true this, this what's, is what's insane too 
What's insane too is because it's like a YouTube thing, right? Like a video, you'd almost expect the trajectory of this documentary to be about like a game that was overpromised and never delivered. But it's like, no, they've just been like killing it and it's just been working this whole time mm-hmm. from these dudes in like Iceland. <laughs> It's just kind, kind of, of uh, <clears throat> yeah, that kind of tracks. So you need you need a, a very isolated level of autism to, to carry that. I think I went out. to a, I went to an art museum once, and they had some kind of display that was displaying the largest Eve battle ever. That's actually, like that's actually so sick. Millions of, <laughs> I always, all the like, millions of ships and like all the laser beam trajectories and everything created this big like miasma that they had. Plotted out somehow, like on the wall with LEDs. I don't know why this contradiction exists, but like when I see shit like that at like a museum, I scoff. I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? Uh, but and then on the same token, I'm like, games are art. They are. They're <laughs> art. They, they are. As well, soon as they're treated like art, that's, like, the, that's no, the kind no, of no, human psychology I can get behind. Well, what's interesting is that they were even saying that the Eve Online, like these early battles and how they were, uh, like said in blogs and stuff, people documented them almost as if you know, like real world battles, like the fucking battle of <laughs> like, Antietam or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like people like are like correspondence. It, yeah, like whenever they're the first came out because they're like, oh, this is gonna be like important. Like uh people are gonna look back on this and be like, oh my god, those are some of the first <laughs> battles. Oh my god, the casualties in that war were atrocious. Which so sounds sad. so stupid, but at the same time, it's like, <laughs> dude, in a hundred years, that's going to be actually pretty interesting to be like, to, to probably years. look back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because especially think about how fast time, like games die, or even like the generation that's playing it is probably dead. And like, it's the same way that you look at like the Great Depression in the 30s or like shit like that. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. uh, it, it's something where it's like not so far away, but it's old enough to where you're like, that's insane that they were doing that's that. That's right. My then. grandpappy was in the bread lines on Eve Online. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and through it, through my family's hard work, we got to a nice middle class living now in Eve Online. God, I mean, literally, there's, I, I, there's probably, there's probably guys, if they ever managed to procreate where a moment in Eve Online is the greatest moment of their life. They're oh, gonna procreate in Eve Online. Well, they probably you could. Don't, you literally, you there's, don't need like real children. Well, that's the thing is that you probably could literally have people who are like, "This is uh, enough for me. I'm so uh, I'm so attached to this game emotionally that like my son in this game is like." <laughs> I mean, there's got to be cases of that, like legitimately people being like, "I look at you as a role, real role son." Playing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, but yeah, like, it's just there's no as a delineation. Role play thing, and then you're putting it goes like on for months and then years. You're putting patch, on how many patch hours? Notes. Patch notes. We've added catch to the game. I love you, Dad. I love you too, son. <laughs> wow, this right, game dude, is go, awesome. <laughs> go finish your micron bread, whatever the fuck Eve Online bread is. You know, <laughs> go finish your micron <laughs> bread and gravy. <laughs> mm, the standard Eve online dinner, micron bread and gravy. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Uh, the, will of, the pirates come? Only if you don't go to sleep on time. <laughs> uh, you know those days are long behind them. And then, of course, it's like this is the beginning of a movie where it's like he definitely knows uh-huh. the pirates are coming. And he's like, oh, no, they're attacking. Get Dad, in the why, ship and put, run. Get, get, get the pillow up. Dad, why is your... Uh, yeah, I love you. I love you. I love you, son. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Just fucking kills his son. Man, that would be. I would. Hey, put that in. Hey, Eve Online, fucking Swissgar and Bjorn, if you're listening, put that in. I will try to do it. <laughs> okay, if that sounds like a good idea. I think I will see if I can do that as real. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, the weird. A weird kind of game where I don't know a single person and I have a like a fair amount of like I was gonna say a lot but I've never had a lot of friends I have a uh smattering of video game friends and not a single one of them has even gone near that game it's like where yeah. is this audience of people playing it because I've never met one well that's the thing is I like I it, it's weird that I I've never even heard of the game it, it's never even crossed my oh you hadn't even like heard of it no this documentary. Uh, well uh, and to be fair I've never I mean I didn't have internet till I know, you don't later like on or whatever so it's like uh 
I'd only heard of WoW, but it was just because everyone my age was playing WoW. But I think WoW was like far, far more easy to get into and just like way more popular. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's so. like less, uh, less of a hurdle to run around with your gay little blood elf than it is to, I don't know, make a functioning <laughs> society in this retarded game. Well, he said, yeah, uh, I think they make they make like federations that the ships have to join, kind of like a gamer clan, I guess. Well, yeah, that's but like then, there's literal. It was it was kind of funny. They was talking about like the resource, like mining resources in the south became harder. It was like something almost indirectly <laughs> civil war related. The like, girl was like, he's like the people in the south band together because, uh, and they became more pirates and stuff. So like, and if anybody from the north side of the map. Would like come down, they would just like destroy all their shit and steal all of their resources. <laughs> the north and stuff. side of the map are trying to take our space slaves, and we need them. Our economy relies on it. Well, it's crazy too. Is there's like five? There's like almost six thousand Stargate things, like six thousand actual stars in the on the map. It's like a huge fucking. Just it's just huge. It's pretty. It's just it's very impressive. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've never played it. I would have assumed it was procedural if it's all. Yeah, like, that's the thing. It's probably too old to be number. procedural. Yeah, that's crazy. But that's whenever I hear that, like, oh, this game's got seventy trillion things. I'm yeah, like, it's hey, like uh, they're, they're all going to be yeah, yeah. shit. They're all gonna yeah, be it's all generic bullshit. And you know, I don't like think that the I don't think that the the thing too is like I think they use the space aspect to their advantage because it is just literally spaceships and you know it's it's just space but i think they're able to put more time into like trade hubs and just like the exterior of things and you never really have to go in you're always just just like kind of like seems like a crazy amount of windows you're just clicking around and you fly to another area (laughs) yeah i think i mean i think it's it seems much like playing risk you know yeah 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 yeah. and they, they run like the different territories and yeah, Except you, you become like a cog. And it's it's you always funny shit for your federation. It's always funny too because it's like these are operating on like computers in like 2004. So it's like whenever there's like a huge battle with like hundreds of people, it just drops down to like three frames a second. So it's just like <laughs> this blurry fucking mess. But people are like, "This is sick." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I can't wait for this to be in a museum one day. What I was going to say is like the museum you're at, Don, it'd be so funny if it was like a Renaissance, like a Napoleon painting or something. Like uh, just a giant epic thing where it's like, yes, and this this painting here, you're like, whoa, this is beautiful. It was made in the great year of 2004. It's like supposed to be like really far, like far away. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. God. Wow. That's got to be the same. That would probably be, but like, you know, if it's. 2020 if it's a uh, 2220 right and then the 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 picture frame it was a nice renaissance painting and it said 2004 that i feel like people would be dumb enough back then to be like that's pretty much like napoleon era times yeah oh i see you know what i mean because yeah. it's so far away yeah, it already all gets, it all gets pushed together yeah like we constantly conflate you know probably like 1300s and, and if anything so. if anything people would probably like that too because they're just like i'm tired of watching these fucking guys on horses dude show me some more of that like <laughs> spaceship stuff they will probably like think it happened though it just gets yeah. all muddled up and mixed up and they're yeah. like yeah and then in 2004 we had giant space battles <laughs> really yes oh yes 100 percent. time itself slowed down there was so much ships Think about how powerful Korea would be if every fight, <laughs> like every world fight was actually like there was never any soldiers or anything, like never any actual casualties lost. It was just them like booting up digital armies and fighting each other, which I think would be a much, much more enticing thing. And I think that you would even see people like betting on the wars and stuff and people. Rep- no, but then. Yeah, they would always win. So yeah, like, you, no. why would you want well, to lose all the time? Well, that's what I'm saying. Then, think about how then, powerful they'd be. And then we just we just attack them. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're, hey, buddy, we're six yeah, foot. Let's try, try this sor- for the, five the minutes. Sorus losers. All right, well, okay, well. <laughs> oh. All right, yeah, you guys win. Just like fucking B2 font, like bombers just flying over. <laughs> why? Okay, that, that's a good question. Why can't the Koreans put their autism to good use in the real world like that 
think they already did, right? With video games and shit. No, no, but stuff. in like war, why why can't they like, you know, maintain top, mid, and bottom in real life? Lack of resources, dude. You reckon that's what it is? I bet so. I bet you they've brought in like Faker from League of Legends. That League of Legends player that's really good. I think he's <laughs> even from Korea. <laughs> Can you be at the general of our army? <laughs> he's like, how many pots do you start with? <laughs> and they're like, what? And he's like, I can't do this. This There's is no insane. Way. You can't expect me to do this with so limited resources. Who, who's, who's, who's maintaining mid? Who's my what's ally? My, who's my teammate? What's my damage per second? <laughs> you, just, you just need to tell the units where you to have, go and You have rocket missiles and warships. I don't think I can do it. Yeah. If there was, if anything, I bet you there is like an unspoken rule. Which there's like stuff. There's games like Risk, like you were saying, Don. There's like games like Civilization. But if they, th- th- there's definitely a studio. I bet, like an American studio, that was like, we're gonna make a, a war simulator, or something like that. You, like that's very realistic. And I bet you they got shut down by the fucking like by the UN. They're like, please don't do this. <laughs> don't, don't teach them. Yeah, well, I, exactly. feel, I feel like games like EVE Online are like fucking honeypot FBI traps so we don't have more Unabombers. So it wouldn't surprise me if there is like a... Ooh, the, that's the, a good the, point. The reason they have like all these uh, yeah. RTSs in Korea is to make sure they don't, like they channel their, their warlike crazy strategy brains to something harmless <laughs> instead of taking over the globe. Yeah, it's a weaponized autism thing again. Yeah. Yeah. Psyop. These these people them. these people don't have as much power as the uh as the ones we've said before <laughs> with countries bowing to them and you know giving them fantasy novels and stuff like that. But they're just like kind of crazy so they're just like we'll put you in a simulator, which actually it makes me think of that uh that old internet video FPS Doug where it's like this guy is clearly insane, but he just like puts all of his insanity into CS:GO. Oh, boom! Headshot yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. He's like, you know, yeah. I could, I could, I could join the army, but if I get a lag spike out there, if I get a lag spike out there, I'm, uh, you know, I'm dead for for real. <laughs> I could join the army, but if I get a rifle out there, I will immediately start shooting my own friends in the back. Probably, you know, just like just like for the troll of it. He's like laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that epic, guys. Wasn't that an epic troll? Just like blood everywhere. FPS Doug, what a guy. Hope what a, he's doing what well. a guy. Hope he's doing well, dude. That's it. I do. Do you know what? I wonder about that. I wonder about those people who had like their little like moments in the sun and just like, what is he doing now? Is he just like working construction somewhere? He comes home, he, he watches the like gif of himself from 2002 screaming boom headshot. <laughs> I honestly. I most YouTubers that clear a million, they. The the average channel life is like five years, and then all those people just go off and I don't know. I think back then too, or something that early of the internet, it was people doing it just because they had fun with it. I think that he probably got mm. some kind of paychecks for it, but I bet you anything, all, all of those people are much happier than like everybody doing it now. Like uh, right now, what was it? I was watching Seth Everman's video. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he uh. He uh, is leaving YouTube at the end of this year, and he was like, he he was. I mean, a lot of the stuff he said was obvious, but it was it was just interesting to hear someone actually say it out loud um, in that context. Because I think a lot of like YouTube people talk to each other, and they're just like, you know, I'm in hell. <laughs> this is this is this is uh, you know a m- mental torture kind of thing. Blah blah blah. Uh, but he was basically just saying, like, at a certain point, I think for every YouTuber, I don't know if he said every YouTuber, but I think at a certain point, the cons start to outweigh the pros, even if it is money, because you're just kind of like trapped in your room all day and every facet of your life becomes like content creation. It's just like this parasitic thing. And then now, like, the platform itself has changed since he first started. Now it's like, uh, the platform has changed and now it's like YouTube is like wanting every YouTube video to kind of be the same, like retention time. So every person is like trying to achieve the same goal 
and there's less variation and all that kind of stuff. Yada, yada, yada. All I'm saying is I think that like the people that were back then, like the, the FPS Doug guy, the dude who did Unforgivable. I don't know if you guys remember that series. I think one of them are dead. So that probably doesn't count. But I bet you I, I bet you a lot of those people are just like, yeah, I'm a, I work at Enterprise Rental Car. I'm extremely happy. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> like I, I have a wife and kids. I it could not a life honestly couldn't be better. Didn't this like Seth Everman guy only up, up, upload like very occasionally anyway? Yeah, I don't think that the sentiment though is any less uh It sounds like he's being a fucking baby. He's being oh, yeah? a baby Seth. Yeah, it does. You know what? Yeah, good. Let the weak die. That's a healthy More. mindset to have. That's going to get you a lot of friends, I think. <laughs> I don't need I don't need friends. I've got two of the best ones already. Yeah. I think yeah, one of charming. them. I think I think one of them wants you to die, and I'm gonna let you. And I'm gonna let you. Yeah, that's the worst part. I don't know who it is. I don't exactly. know who the fuck it is. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you stew on which one it is. Oh fuck! <laughs> fuck! Yeah, but, but it's only one, evidently. So yeah, so I'm fucking. That's mystery. a fifty percent. Yeah, that's not bad. It is mysterious. Yeah, that that's, is true. I, I can live but, with that. But then again, I you know I'm only one of the two brains, so I don't know. <clears throat> hmm. I feel like I need this is like a little game of clue. <laughs> Who bashed in Tom's brain with the crowbar? That'd be a fun little clue manila envelope to open. Oh <laughs> it was X it would be in the very, library with a candle. Very stick. funny if Hunter got on a plane, flew down here, went to your house, and just killed you with a okay, crowbar. Okay, well, why are you putting that <laughs> in his head? Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you putting what a, that bad what juju a, in his What frame? a haunting thing to say. <laughs> but at the same time, I, yeah, I was I, I was wonder there. which one wants me to die. Mm. You said it you said it so quick, but yet I was I was there. It's mentally. not like I fantasized it, about it, this it, or it, anything, it, but it, wouldn't it, it be hilarious? In your head. Get out of my head. <laughs> Get out of my head. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck you guys. You know what it is? Is I see someone like that quit after doing one video a month. Like, it's probably I don't know what his content is, but I'm just gonna assume for my own fantasy, it's pretty easy content. And it makes me scared that I'm like, oh, is it? Am I gonna reach that point where I'm like, am I gonna reach that point before ever having made it properly? That's the fear. You know what I mean? I, th I think you're looking at it a different way because. I think that he has probably found what he was wanting to do versus I still think that you are trying to achieve the thing that you're trying to do. You know what I mean? So it's like two different paths. I think that if you had already done it, you'd probably get there a lot faster. But I think it's like now it's still just like this, this like a uh, primal instinct to survive and do the thing that you set out to do versus him and the cultural impact that he's had and like the kind of like social uh, impact that he has had. I think it's probably like, oh, well, I just wanted to do this. Like, I think he said, like, I wanted to just do it because I, you know, I first watched Smosh back in like 2006 and I just wanted to be a YouTuber. Whatever that meant. I don't think it was like, oh, I want to make a series or something. You know what I mean? So I think it's like just vastly different goals. And I think he probably just attained his at a point. And then it became like, oh, well, this doesn't feel, this, th this doesn't feel like something I want to pursue anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. But at the same time, um, it's kind of a catch-22 because once you have a YouTube channel that has a couple million subscribers, to ever walk away from that, like at any point, I think will always be a very difficult to escape what if in your life, you know? Sure. Which like, is also if like you... If, if you stop like 10 years ago, you're like, man, I had a fucking... Yeah, a TV station. Yeah, I had a good just, thing going. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's why at the same time, if he sticks with it and, you know, if he like has like, ah, I just want to do this, I have a lot more respect than that than someone trying to like keep like a candle lit that's like uh, <laughs> right at the fucking end of its life. You know what I mean? That's the truly, the truly haunting ones are the people who like still do want to do it, but their audience for whatever reason is just like abandoning them. And you see oh, them like man. upload like just floundering attempts to to reignite that spark or save the thing or like 
Well, it just becomes kind of pathetic. And then you become like this, like you become that person at the carnival where like people are throwing the baseballs and just like wanting to watch you like dip into the tank. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's like boogie. Like if I look at boogie 298 now, it's just like at this point where it's like, it, I think that he is addicted and I don't think he knows what else he can do, but now it's become this like just extremely sad, like, I mean, not even a disrespectful thing, but just like a pathetic attempt to try and grasp something from a different time. And at the same time, you can't even fault a person for trying to do it because it's like, well, I did it once before. Why can't I do it again? But it's just, it's fucking, it's just difficult. But you know, and I think the thing is too, is like there's different parameters of success. Like, I don't think you have to always get like, peak peak numbers i think as long as you're still doing something that's like fun to you or like you know still has a purpose you're still actively you know doing interesting things uh even if it is to a smaller audience i still consider that a success especially after like years and years and years and years of things like it's impossible to maintain that like that relationship with like a younger audience or people who are like more on the platform. Cause especially if you're on the platform long enough, it's like people are just going to grow out of the platform and be like, Oh, well, I just don't consume stuff that same way, et cetera. So stop it. it <laughs> stop it. What was that? You stop it right now. Stop it. Tom, you have to realize you're more, t- you, you are mortal. They, there no! will be, there, there will be an end to all of this. It's, it's, it's fine though. No! I'm going to discover I the think, honestly, secrets of necromancy. You I watch. think that you undermine the effect that even you've had on like people that are starting on YouTube now. Like, I, I mean, even before well, I, I would, was on, even before I was on YouTube doing, okay, well, <laughs> I know that you want me to die. Was well, it just well, that thing of like, I think well, that yeah, it, that's, it, that's, that's, that's the thing. It's <laughs> what's funny on her is that we, when we were making show quest, we, me and Tom loved to doom and we, literally doomed about oh man i'll bet this inspires someone else but it's true though do it better than us <laughs> they will come along and the, and they'll they'll also make a sh- they'll make a show before us and we'll never make it and then be like yeah i was inspired by those <laughs> flash kids guys i th- think they were called flash kids but I just know that's not the case. You, you guys are already making your things. But even if that was the case, like we, we, we are, we're, we're making it. We're, we're doing okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, what I was going to say is the, uh, is the, but yeah, it is, even it is if, very funny. You're literally that guy. If you know, were, how many shows have you sold? <laughs> You're the show quest fear made manifest. The, uh, even if you guys, even if your channel ended there, like let's say you guys didn't make cartoons again, I still think that that's like, Something to be like, yeah, that that's a cool thing that I did in my life. I think like no. even even the stuff that you did before that, I think that it would be something that you can't see now because you're blinded by maybe unrealistic Rage. goals Un- and like <laughs> your own perception. Rage. But I think okay, like in time, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's rewind a bit there. That was mm. painful. That was a stab in the heart. What? Oh, I missed it. I was you're, still thinking you're about blinded by you're blinded by unrealistic goals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Your goals of Tom being 140 years old, thinking science is going to catch up to be that, and that you probably have an un- the unrealistic goal too isn't the aspect of you having a show. It's you having a show that's going to be like I need it to be as big as X, or I need it to be the biggest. I to need be something. it to be as big as Digital Circus. Yeah, and I'm like, good fucking luck with that, <laughs> because it's like <laughs> that's like such a one in a lifetime thing, or not even one in a lifetime, but it's just like it's catering to an audience that just isn't doing what we're doing, which is fine. You know what I mean? But I have the exact same monkey brain where I'm like, well, if it's not, if, if I don't, cl- if this thing doesn't get 50 million views, I mean, did it really even go up? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's an unhealthy expectation. It isn't the aspect. It isn't the realization that you can't do it, but it's the expectations that like you maybe don't even say out loud but you're just thinking in your head mm-hmm. and that's the thing that you're like using the parameter of success for. I need to oh, make uh, a show for mentally ill teenage girls and then I can get 50 million views. That's, that's what, that's the happen. problem is you're making it for mentally teenage, yeah, mentally ill teenage boys, but you really got to switch it no, over to girls. Yeah, that's Ill, for real. 30 year old boys. Yeah. Mentally yeah. ill 30 year old vets. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, that's what all cartoons are targeted towards. And you know, there's just probably not, not enough of them. There's literally I'd buy, yeah. I'd buy a shirt, no, but the, I don't think I can get it this week, boys. No, but you know, you know what, Tom? I'm, uh, <laughs> the benefits haven't been paid out. So, uh, the VA is really screwing me this this month, boys. Uh, I, will, I wish that they'd send the paycheck already, but I'll I'll try to get a hoodie and a beanie ASAP. <laughs> there are a lot of those guys that spend their benefits on uh, <laughs> that's, miniatures. That's what I'm banking so on, I'm, baby. I'm, I'm hoping to capture <laughs> every on single, single one of them. I don't got a place to we'll sleep, but I got the new Flash Gets Painted figure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, probably, I'll uh, probably hit up the soup kitchen tonight and see if I can't get a bunk. See, see if I can't get a Wi Fi connection, watch the latest <laughs> tune yeah. from the boys. Go back, re Ben Show Quest. That's going to be me when I'm homeless. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> show Quest. <laughs> oh, I wonder if they're ever going to do that combo breaker. That would be oh, something. Oh, huh? man. They do that combo breaker now. That'd be great. I fucking hate I hate my mortality so violently. I'm so against it. I know. How long do you think you'll live? Forever. Actually. Look at me. If, I look hey, I look, forever, I still look second fifteen. Guess. Yeah. I still look fifteen. I still you if you if you put me in high school right now, you would just no no, yeah. no one would be able to be like Who's That's the, the who's that man. who's that youngest looking kid in school? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm ready to learn some maths, Miz. That'd be me. And everyone would be like, wow, what are you? Seventh He's so young. Grade? Eighth. I'm eighth grade. Yeah. You shouldn't be in the high school. You should be in the middle school, right? Oh, yeah, dude. It's fucking, that's what I like to hear. I don't need to hear that I'm like dying and irrelevant. Makes me think of that, uh, that one other YouTube guy who's like, I think in his like late 50s. And he's like siphoning blood from his son to stay alive as long as he can and look as young as he possibly <laughs> can forever. Fuck, I need a son, huh? Well, when I when I heard about that, I was like, that's like the most ingenious. Like if you were mentally unwell, that is the strongest plan you have to live forever. <laughs> like literally like, like a pro pro procreate and, and then be like, you're you. my blood bag. <laughs> you are my blood bad and black all of my oil organs. like literally do an oil change when you have your first child and the thing too is you can keep just having kids and it's like oh okay new God. blood nothing hits like the like the first month blood the fucking as soon as it pops out get a little fetus transfusion yeah oh, he's wearing he, he's wearing it like fresh. one of those uh he's wearing like one of those camel bags that r wears like runners wear for water <laughs> he's wearing it like he's that with an, an IV a, <laughs> to his jugular bag just That'd on be the so hip. sick, but yeah, he doesn't. Which I think it's like I forgot what I think it's like another health reason, but he also doesn't go out in the sun. That so he's like he's, so he's super white. Yeah, no, I was like when I saw him, I was like that's almost he's probably a shade tanner than Tom. Is what I said. <laughs> what, what is this guy's name? I can't remember it. How does I, one I, reach I, him I, and I, ask him his secrets? Mm -hmm. How do what's his phone number? He, 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 he sounds like an actual vampire. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he's <laughs> extremely <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah, I think he could be a vampire. There, I think there is some scientific basis to that as well, like uh, stem cells or vampires or some shit. No, I mean, like yeah. if, watching his videos. No, 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 the no, thing no, too the, is, the I, I, I think, thing, yeah, well, that, that's obviously. the <laughs> the blood thing. I know that's like a billionaire started doing that, and that became like a big thing was the blood transfusion thing. But no, I mean, like I, I think, like he, I think he started posting like. Five years ago, I could be wrong, could be sooner, but the whole thing is that he uh, trickled down to the everyman. That's my question. But he, uh, I think he was a lot more pompous when he first came out, then everyone memed on him, and now he's like much more humble. But the way he explains shit, you're like, oh, I mean, that makes sense. But like, it just seems like a life where it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm can, you're constantly prepping, and you're it's like, you're never really experiencing anything, it's always just like. Right. Just one of those things where it's like I'm forever trapped in this cycle of like I wake up this time, I do this for four hours. Like his morning routine is four hours, <clears throat> is what he said in the video. Yeah, that is kind of ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Which, you know, I guess it's the same thing where it's like it, it seems like an unhealthy obsession where it's you will become like that's just the existence you want to have, but I, I don't I, I mean it doesn't like, seem appealing to me. I'm too I'm in two minds. On one mind I'm like yeah, okay, so you're living longer to miss life, and that's ironic. But on the other side, I really, like, respect those Patrick Bateman-esque 17-hour, like, 
I rub peach scrub on my face. I have to remove the dead skin cells before they multiply. Like I kind of, I kind of vibe with that level of autism. I'm like, sure. yeah, fair enough. You fucking, you go through your 20,000 step routine. Yeah. Well, people also think uh, in the distant, well, the near future, excuse me, uh, being eternal is like probably on the horizon technologically. So I wonder if those guys think, yeah, I'm missing life now, but I'm just trying to reach the, you know, the precipice. But when Elysium happens, I am so good. I'm exactly. Set. I'm I'm there. I'm still alive, <laughs> and it's okay. Do you see this? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and yeah. I mean, it, it, at that point, like if you're like thirty and a billionaire, it, that's kind yeah, of like horror, a half reasonable. The horror gamble of that, because it's of like, that gamble, though, the horror of that gamble is that, like, okay, let's say we achieve immortality age wise. That means the only yeah. way you you can die, and you will die, is some sort of freak accident. Where you like, yeah. you know, like someone you're doing a little bit of ice hockey and someone decides to fly and kick you in the throat. Yeah. Pretty well, sweet way to die, though, to be fair. Or you did just you, kill yourself. Did it, did any, you guys yeah. saw that, right? Yeah, I saw it in the, the hockey league thing. Yeah, Unbelievable. He just the amount of does blood a coming out of his kick, yeah. like a UFC fucking kick straight to his throat. Oopsie. Sorry. Whoops. That guy should, be, that guy should definitely slippery. be kicked out. I see Swippley. That's what he should have said. He just Charlie. he just got kicked in the neck by somebody or something. Yeah, some ice hockey player decided to fucking do a spinning back kick to another one's throat and just slash. Oh, while they were fighting. <laughs> no, Jesus. No, just just for fun. No, I and, think uh, I, th- I don't think that they were fighting. I think he they it was no, like, it wasn't fighting. He, yeah, he, he pissed just... him off on the court and he just like slid back around and yeah, just kicked him. Well, that's what I mean. They, People, they fight on the ice. They're like smashing. It was, yeah, each it other wasn't. And stuff. They weren't doing UFC yeah, but, on the ice. Like it, it, it wasn't, wasn't like, like no, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's hockey fighting. They no, like yeah. deck each other. And shit. I, oh, <laughs> why I do you think I'm saying stupid, stupid things? Why no, do you think I'm an episode? idiot? Like, I, th- I think what he's if saying, they, what if you could play catch in Eve online? That you was know? funny. That was a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, that's stupid. Why would the gameplay loop that, of Eve add why catch? Would it, that why would be would, boring. Yeah, would that wouldn't that? trigger people's <laughs> serotonin levels at all. You've, you've, you. you've jumped the shark of Cream Crew with that joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called exaggeration for comedic effect. Yes, what if these ice hockey players were fucking doing UFC on the ice? That was the yeah, gag. Not, that was the bit. No, that's, I'm not, that's stupid. I'm just trying to get to the real that's bottom impossible. of it. That's what I do. I yeah, hope but this I was is saying the like, were they were doing the pushing minutes. and shoving. No, they, in, they were not fighting. And then he no, does a they kick. were not fighting. No, they were not fighting. Okay. He just flying kicked him out of nowhere because he's a fucking psychopath. Okay. I think Although people are saying it's it was an actual, it was an actual American player too, not one of those dirty Russians. Yeah, one of we lost one of the good ones for sure. Yeah. And it happened in London too, so it's very fitting that someone got knifed on the ice <laughs> in London. Uh, Maybe it wasn't London. It was definitely the UK though. Probably London. God, what a fucking bad night for his family. There's also <laughs> that uh, I don't know if you've seen that horse video circu- circulating around on Twitter, Uh-oh. but that's uh, I heard what's, what's that's that another one. <laughs> I, I I feel like I can't even say. I feel like you have to just stumble upon it. So does like, someone is. okay? So someone gets fucked by a horse. That's my guess. I don't know. Yes, you do. <laughs> I do, but I don't know. Now, how does okay? What do I type in to find it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, you just type in horse video. I don't know. On on what platform? X. There's 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 too many oh, wow. horse videos. You've you've been captured. Mind. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. Does he get? That's a small horse. Um, he probably gets head from it, and then his dick gets bitten off. Oh, oh yeah, that horse is fucking. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh come on! Hell yeah, bro, bro, that's dangerous. Did he die? You're gonna put, yes you're gonna yeah, you're gonna puncture uh, a liver, dude. Uh, yeah, maybe that's why it's a tiny horse. I don't know. That that is big brain though. That's why you get a really small horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, why do you have that horse? Do you ride that? That doesn't no, look I like you like can him. support your weight. No, it just no, fucks I, me. No, I just like him. No, he's just like, he's, he's just a no, good I just, boy. I just, I, just, I just like him all that. He's just a really good like boy. No, no, he won't bite. He didn't bite. Go ahead, touch him. Can you imagine the problem yeah, good is for him, though, that actually, fucking that's, horse that's... has got a taste for like anus. Mm-hmm. How fucked is that? 
Every time it goes near a human, it's like it's got one thing in its mind. <laughs> that's kind of a terrifying horror film. There you go, Hunter. I could, that's for you. How, Take it to A24. Dude, how do you think... So, male horses don't fuck other male horses, right? Probably. probably, probably typically. <laughs> well, so... In so, a just yeah, society. So, obviously, so, what, so what, <laughs> what do you think he does? Do you think he, like, sprinkles, like, female, like, vagina juice he, on he his sprinkles, ass? He sprinkles feed on his ass. No. Well, I mean, yeah, I get... Well... No, I'm joking. Well, yeah, but you could get him to you could get the horse to lick your ass. It's not the worst idea. If you're, if, you know, if you're into this kind of thing. <laughs> so how do you get a fun. male? If you're if you're a dude, how do you get a male horse to fuck you? There must be some kind so of process. So, like, how that, would someone go about doing that? Th- that's exactly. crazy. How does someone get a horse to penetrate them? To f- to if they're a guy. If they which, were a man per se. Yeah. I, and I'm I'm dumb enough to believe that a horse, a male horse, just kind of knows a woman is a woman, you know? Right. So yeah. So it's like, like well, this kind of makes <laughs> like sense. That, that, like that. Yeah, this it kind of makes sense. It's like, oh, oh, this is this is the female of this species, so I can fuck this one, you know? Yeah. But um, I just like how the th- horse they must knows have some that, delineating like, intelligence. Well, the guy offers up his ass, and the horse is like, oh, okay, I get that. Like, it understands the body language. Like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Like that to me is the crazy part. Oh, I see. Well, just backing backing up. So if you were a gay horse, you could just get all the big, sexy straight horses <laughs> to fuck you. Well, just just the fact <laughs> that the you horse just do like the little dance. Well, no, but but that's horse on horse like body language. I understand how a horse knows what that's all about. But the fact that the horse knows the human is like offering up his butthole to it to me is yeah very like you know it's it's crazy. It's like when you, if you, when a cat winks at you and you're like, does it know? Does it know that like a <laughs> wink is like a, a human expression and it's funny? Or did it just wink? Right. Does this horse know that a human like backing up like that is, is just offering oh, up definitely. there? I think that's, it's I think crazy. that's with, that's with every animal, I think. I think, I think, I think as long as you have balls and a test, like balls and a big hard cock, I think anybody can catch that drift. <laughs> yeah, this, this goat, this goat is wor- walking Begging back for it. in it. Oh, have you seen those videos of uh, people like there's the fucking sheep in a field or whatever, and people f- film like them walking behind because their fucking asses are so funny looking and they like jiggle and sway. You know what I'm talking about? Or is I that just so, something yeah. I've... Yeah, okay, I just, whew, whew, That was close. People are going to think I was weird for a second. <clears throat> no, I still Do think you guys you have uh, teddy bear hamsters growing up? No, little, I never had hamsters. Rats. Why does that sound like a masturbation device? <clears throat> a, te- a, teddy, a, small a teddy bear hamster? I don't know. I think it's just the addition... It's just the add-on of teddy bear to me, where it sounds like a toy, is why I think yeah. that... You ever had a... T- you ever had a... You ever have a Nerf gun... Fuck stick. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think I've ever had that. <laughs> yeah, tell us about the teddy bear hamster. Well, they just, they were these cute little rats you get at the oh, pet so store, cute. but then you bring them home and you come to find that you they have em. balls like this. They have balls like the size of their heads that they just drag behind them. Mm. The tiny, tiny little animal with huge testicles. <laughs> I loved it. I loved that. I love I that. Him go. I love that little guy. Wish he was still around, but he's gone. <laughs> died a violent death, huh? <laughs> yeah, I died. Well, I, I stomped <laughs> with my heel until he became paste on the floor. He became God, a permanent. He fi- still around. <laughs> he became a permanent fixture of uh, <laughs> a, a stain in the carpet. So he's always with us. Yeah. No, I think the only, the only the only other thing besides like a regular dog and cat situation was uh, I had like I had a hermit crab for a while. You had a hermit crab. Yeah. Went to the mall, <clears throat> got a crab. I, I had hermit crabs too. As yeah. I said, mine died in like two weeks. Yeah, they don't live long. No, my dad took us to Ocean City, and there was a sandbar or one one of those like I'm gonna pee myself, uh, boys. I'm right back. Cities. Sorry, carry on. Took us to took us to a beach city, and there was a sandbar, and we caught hermit crabs, and then uh, bought like a, a cage for them, and went back to the hotel and put them in the cage. Didn't put water in the cage. 
Woke up the next morning, they were all dead. Yeah, that immediately. They had all like, <laughs> well, they're, they're fucking underwater hermit crabs, and he didn't know there was a difference. <laughs> oh, and there's no shit. like smartphones or <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they we're like really young, and we wake up, and they've like all died in the most horrific, pitiful way. Like they've all left their shell, you know. Yeah. To search for water. <laughs> yeah, they're like, who? And then they're all just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, do you remember at the at the mall when they would have like bejeweled or like designed hermit crab shells? Mm-hmm. I thought that was like looking back on that, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> l- l- looking back on that, I'm like, that's kind of a fucked up thing to do to a hermit crab. It's like, give me it's- my shell back, and you're like, hold on, I'm painting, I'm painting Barbie on the side of your shell. There you go. Now you're gay. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Can I have water, please? Just, yeah, <laughs> roasting them under heat lamps. I, I don't need to be this hot. Please. What did you, what did you name your hermit crab? Do you remember? I can't remember. I think I was, I think I did something really cringe. I think it was Tennyson because I was a big fan of Ben 10. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I named him Tennyson. I see, damn. And I called him Tenny. That's, that's good. But he died, like yeah. literally died in two weeks. And I was just like, yeah, well, if he had the Omni, the, I like the watch or whatever, if the Omni watch or whatever, he probably would have. <laughs> Lived. He's not a real big tennis and fucking. I, I remember being like mad, being like, "Okay, wow, way to die on my dick." <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's probably like definitely my fault or my family's fault. How old were you? Oh, I mean, probably like eight, hmm. eight or nine in that area. A child, a wee yeah, lad. When you're when you're a kid, you're missing uh, like major parts of your brain that are the sort of infrastructure for empathy. And so on. So it's just funny to imagine you being mad at the crab for dying. <laughs> yeah. Just as a kid, just not even understanding, just being like, wow. Then you're kind of sad. Like when someone actually tells you, like, oh, yeah, it's dead, you're like, what? You're going to have like a little moment where you're like, what? He, he's gone. And then it's like a, a flicker of sympathy. And then after that, the children just are like, yeah, fucking dumb crab. Can't even live. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was that, was that how you learned about death? Is that where your parents brought you a crab? No, I learned about death. I think the first thing that ever died in my life was my great grandpa. I remember like going to his <laughs> funeral. I think I've already I think I've already told this story before, but I remember going to my great grandpa's funeral when I was like seven or eight, and I was so narcissistic as a child. Like it's it's it stemmed so early, where I sat there and everybody left pretty much. Everyone was leaving. It was an open casket funeral, and they shut the casket kind of thing. Um, and then, and then it was the part where it's like, you go from like the reception area to the actual burial. Um, and I was at the reception area where people were kind of like going out and getting ready to get in their cars to meet at the cemetery. And I remember like put my hand on his closed coffin and I was like, I'll see you soon. Or I'll see, I, I basically said like something like I'll see you in 80 years or something like that. I literally said that. And in my of, mind, I, I like that. <laughs> and then in my mind, I was like, that's going to be so sweet in my movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's gonna be so, that's gonna be such a good moment in my movie. The man fucking went through the Great Depression only for his little retard great grandson. Literally, to be like, Great Depression fought in the World War Two. The only use your life has is as a little fucking is a gimme in my movie. Yeah, a little fucking fat yeah. goblin comes up and he's just like, "See you in eighty three years, Grandpa." I remember also being I remember also being very upset too because the grandpa there had a he had a uh, like a jar next to his uh chair just full of like M&Ms like an M&M jar. And I remember that was like the only reason I liked going over there cuz I didn't like how it smelled like the house was just smelled like old people and it scared me. Mm-hmm. Like he scared me he was so old he was like ooh, ooh, whatever. it scared the it scared the shit out of me. And I remember the next time I went over cuz we were like the next week we went over just to see how my grandma was doing. Um and my fat ass just like, you know, was snooping around for those M&Ms, couldn't find them. And I remember I just like threw a fit the whole time. I was like, so I guess we're just not doing M&Ms today. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're just not doing M&Ms and grandpa's dead. Okay. Yeah, what a fucking asshole, huh? I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm the worst. No, not you, your grandpa. Oh, yeah. Fuck that guy, too. And, uh, Do you think the old person smell is fart? No, no. It's literally like... 
atrophy. I think it's decaying. Yeah, I think it's decaying skin. Like it's just the way your skin smells. Is now. it? Is it actually? Yeah, it's like it the reason. It's like, like I don't think I don't think old people. Old people obviously shower and stuff. But I just literally think it's like old, like old dying skin, always around you. My and my farts. theory is, yeah, everything gets looser and less controlled the older you get. And I, I suspect they're just farting constantly. You can tell, though. Con- you can I'm tell. constantly farting. No, no, no. But it's like but that. it's a very specific type of fart that I've smelled myself. And that's Apple where the theory comes from. Apple sauce and originals. Well, I was just saying, like, I think that like I've definitely been around some of my great-grandparents. And they just smell like diapers. And I'm like, okay, well, they're definitely wearing diapers shitting themselves. But then you like actually smell right. the fart and like they're just talking and you can tell they just like shit themselves. And you're like, okay, no, that was actually just their dead dying body. This is the fart. This is like what I thought I smelled earlier. Uh, That's how I see it. Especially even just like weird shit like this. Like, I don't know, like if they just use like old chemicals to clean their clothes, but all the clothes always smell like a toxic flower. Like my grandma's hair, you, you know, you see like an old woman's head and you can see her, the top of her scalp and it's just like thin white hair on top and her hair. I, I just always, I remember, I remember gagging as that, like I was 10, I would gag. Would, you would, my you would literally scalp. gag. It became like a weird thing. It became a weird thing where like, even if I saw somebody's like regular scalp, I would just be like, I would gag. I don't know why. Because of the association with your grandma's. I Maybe. I, it was just a weird period for a while where I would gag at scalps. <laughs> but, it, it def- yeah. but I feel like it definitely probably stemmed from looking at my grandma, like curling her hair. And then she's like, does my hair look pretty? And she would like put her head down and you would just like see all of her head. And I remember just thinking that was like the grossest thing ever. <laughs> I, remember, I remember one time as a kid, I was, I was, I asked my mom, I was like, how much do we, how much do wigs cost so we can give it to grandma? <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, I. it's weird because obviously like there's the human instinct to look your best I get that I understand that clearly I don't have that instinct but most people do and when you're that old it's just impossible yet you still like they put on makeup and they do their hair yeah and, uh, I mean I think you just you're just going for a bar that's lower you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing is that it has shift over the entire span of your life to where it's like this kind of thing. Like I've gained so much weight and done all that stuff. It's not like I just was just like, oh my God. It's something that's just like the days trickle on. And then before you know it, you're kind of already there. I think that's exactly what's going to be like with uh, old age and like that kind of stuff too. Like, I think it's just going to be a thing where you're like, oh, well, this is just it. This is, is this, it is what it is. Or you're like, really don't even consciously think about it. So she's probably still dressing like she, how she was dressing when she was like 30 or 40. You know what I mean? But she's like 105. Yeah, I can't, I can't mm. wait for people of our generation to get old and they've just got giant, you know, gauges in their ears and fucking big emo sweeps. It'll make the it'll make the elder honestly though I I I I look forward to it as well because at least the old people will be interesting to look at at least you can be like a little you know you can point and laugh at how gross they are and it will also inform the younger generations too being like I'm not gonna fucking do that look at that I thought I can't wait like I see a lot of um, memes like clowning on millennials or whatever from from Gen Z about being like cringe whatever and hey I agree with them like millennials super cringe whatever but what they don't know is that their time will come. And that's like the sweetest part of it all. I'm like, you guys don't realize that Gen Alpha are going to do the same shit to you. And you're not, you guys aren't uniquely mm. cool and like awesome and unable to be fucking like goober cringe lords. Just wait, just well, wait. Your time will me, come. The whole Zoomer thing is literally just emulating the 90s. Literally. You can understand any fashion choice. It's like, oh, this is just how people dressed in 1996. You know, yeah, but to them, they're like, oh my god, that's like, <clears throat> you know, a relic from a different time. Also, kind of fair enough. I, I had this thought yesterday. I, I think that human civilization, like in the Matrix, peaked probably like 1999. That was as good as it gets. You I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, with 1999, Creed just announced their new tour <laughs> called Summer of 99. <laughs> 
and I am just so stoked. The 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 <laughs> the lineup is insane. They got three doors down coming with them on tour, along with Daughtry and Switchfoot. Is this oh. wait? Is this a new thing Switch, about to happen? This is they, they, they just announced it. I I I I I am definitely going to that. It's going to be. I got. I, I went like three months ago. I went through a big three doors down phase. Love three doors down. Cause I'm a loser. Sooner or later, something, something. I'm gonna kill myself. I'm here without you, baby. Uh, that's right. That's a good one. If I go crazy, then will you still call me <laughs> Superman? Hell yeah, I did. That is the kind of music one would guess you listen to by looking at you. It is unironically, <laughs> it is impossible to not smile listening to that music. It's like That's when people, it's, it's like when people are like, Creed sucks. It's like, well, bitch, why do you know every lyric then? Because yes, it's corny, but it's like, it just, it, it puts you in a better mood. It's, it's, it's What's cheesy the, what, and stupid and it's just, it's fun. But there's also a level of musicianship. Have you ever up how they became like the meme hate band? No. Have you ever heard the story? Uh-uh. What is the name of, what is the name of that song? The, the, it's been a while. That's, since I've, uh, that's a different band. That's cool. Stained. That's It's Been a While. Really? Oh, hold on. Yeah. That's a fucking... That's, what am I thinking that's of? That's Stained. Are you thinking of, uh... Please call hell. I'm thinking I'm falling farther than I would. I think I'll save. Since I found the road to nowhere, and I'm trying to escape. Anyways, the chorus is hold can me we, down. Can we, just, can we just fade out on you singing that? I'm six feet from the edge, and I'm thinking never get an answer from Don or anything. Maybe six feet, <laughs> hey, so far down. We'll just end the episode there. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. I wanted to tell my story. Sorry, go ahead. What's your story, like this. Yeah, you'll, you, <laughs> you can hear my great, my great anecdote that's definitely worth $5 if you sign up for the and, uh, Cream what, Patreon. What's Don going to say for, for $5? Four premium, four premium episodes. So it's $1.25 to find out what, 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 uh, YouTube essay about why Creed is hated. I'm about to regurgitate sloppily in 20 and, seconds. And hey, that 20 seconds could turn into a great meme that could be slapped on some merch. We have merch. That's right, merch. Uh, check out the link in the description. Buy lots of merch because you whined about it for so long. Uh, and it's a limited run too. because we don't have faith in enough of you buying it. So we're selling this set to see who who actually cares. So buy some merch. It won't be here forever. We'll pr maybe do another set at another time. But there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of options. Check it out. And yeah, if you don't support us on Patreon, fuck you. We'll see you next week for free here. Thank you. Hey guys, we got merch. Limited quantity drop. A limited quantity of items are being produced for the holidays. Orders will begin shipping the first week of December. All orders placed before December 10th will arrive before Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Check out the link in the description or shop the merchandise below the video before it's too late. You guys have been bitching about this forever, so you better buy some If you don't buy some stuff, then go yourself. You.